Hey guys, in this video, I wanted to get into the details of the case setup in Converge. So far, we have been, you know, setting up a few simulations and, uh, you know, some of the options have been skipped. So today I wanted to go through some of the options in detail because that helps you understand the whole simulation environment much better. So I'll start with the applications tab. Now, when you open up the applications tab on the left hand side, you have the categories and on the right hand side, you have the applications. Converge was primarily an internal combustion engine solver and hence we have a dedicated application for that. So any other type of simulation that you want to set up has to be done by clicking on general flow. Okay, I hope that makes sense. The other thing that you can do is on the left hand side, you have all these categories. So for example, you know, you can select the materials that you want under simulation parameters. You can include the parameters that you want. For example, if you want to include gravity, you would enable the body force. Similarly, in the boundary conditions, you have some advanced options. So you will not be using these two options. These are quite advanced. So for example, GT suite coupling enables converge to be coupled with the software called GT power and wall value initialization is a concept that allows us to initialize quantities on wall boundaries. Okay. So moving on, let's go to initial conditions. So in initial conditions, by default, we set up only regions and initializations, but then there is a concept called events. So events is used whenever you want to connect and disconnect two regions. All right. So for that, we will be setting up a shock tube problem soon where you will understand the concepts of events and how they actually work. Mapping is an interesting concept that allows you to take data from either an existing simulation or from experiments to initialize your simulation. When we initialize the domain, we basically give a particular value for pressure and temperature, right? Now let us say that you have data from some other software where the pressure and temperature is provided at each and every point. If you want to take that data and feed it into converge, you would be setting something up called as mapping. Then comes physical models. So this is a list of physical models that converge provides. So depending on the simulation that you want, multiple physical models might be required. Now, remember, you cannot just check all of them together because you cannot run a simulation which uses all of these physical models. All right. Then comes grid control. So under grid control, this is where you set up your base mesh, which we have already done. We did take a look at adaptive mesh refinement and we also looked at fixed embedding. Grid scaling is something that you did when you set up the channel flow problem. So grid scaling helps us change the base grid as a function of time. Finally, output and post-processing. Here we don't typically change. We use both the options by default. And then finally, user-defined functions. So UDF is something that helps us write our own code to do custom calculations. Now, we are not going to be using UDFs in this particular course, so I'm not going to be talking about that. Finally, surface checking. It's enabled by default. So this is your geometry diagnostic tools that's available for you. The next thing that we are going to be looking at is gas simulation. So when you set up your gas simulation, you will see that initially you set up your equation of state. Now you can use an ideal gas model or a real gas model. So ideal gas model means PV equal to NRT is going to be used, or you can employ one of the real gas models. So Redlich Kuang is quite famous and Peng Robinson is also quite famous. If you're interested in learning more about these models, I would recommend you to read the Converge theory manual. All right. Then you can see that there's something called as gas thermodynamic data. What is that? Well, in order to perform CFD calculations, especially if you have gas species, you need to know the entropy, enthalpy, and uh, specific heats for all the participating gas space species. Converge provides you a database of 621 species. You know, for example, if I click on a species, you can actually look at its uh, specific heat, enthalpy, and entropy. All right, as a function of temperature. And there are so many species that are available. You can just click on them, click on the graphs and look at the properties if you want to. All right, now where is this data coming from? This is coming from something called as a NASA thermodynamic data file. Okay, so the NASA thermodynamic data file contains a list of polynomial coefficients that can be used to calculate these properties accurately. Similarly, if I click on gas transport data that contains the viscosity and conductivity for the gases. So let me just close this and click OK here. 
All right, the next thing that you will see is something called as a reaction mechanism. What is that? When you run a convert simulation, if combustion is involved, then you need to provide something called as a mechanism file. So far, we have not done any kind of reacting simulations. That is, we have not done any simulations where combustion is involved. So we don't need a mechanism file. However, if I click on this little icon, you will see a preview of the mechanism file, which is called as meg.dat. You can see that it contains elements, species, and it has a reactions keyword, but then there are no reactions, correct? So when we set up our species here, Converge knows that O2 and N2 are the participating species, right? So that is the only information that is being used from this file because there are no reactions in this particular file. That being said, another thing that I wanted to tell you, which you might have already realized is, you are actually using Converge Studio to generate a bunch of input files. You can see that in order for you to run a Converge simulation, you require the .in and .dat files. So these are the files that are going to be read in by your solver in order to do the simulation, okay? So when you are actually going through the case setup tree, what you are doing is you are editing these input files. For example, if I click on gas simulation one more time and if i click on this little guy you can see that this window is being used to edit the inputs.in file all right so similarly if i select something else for example run parameters and then click on this preview you can see that this is also being used to set up the inputs.in file because the inputs.in contains a lot of properties so you need multiple dialog boxes to set it up and those dialog boxes are shown at different locations in the case setup tree. All right, now let's take a look at simulation time parameters. So your simulation time parameters controls from what time to what time you want to run the simulation. So that is your start time and end time. You should be quite comfortable with that.